Hello and welcome to this video on reflection and refraction which is part of the waves topic in module 4 of electrons, waves and photons for OCR A level physics. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define the concept of reflection and refraction, explain what happens to the waves when they encounter a material and detail how reflection and refraction can be observed with the ripple tank. So we'll be looking at the following part of the OCR A-level physics specification, 4.4.1, wave motion. Now all waves can carry out three different processes when they hit a material. So if you have an instant wave or encountering a new material, you can get reflection, which is when a wave hits the surface and bounces back, refraction, when a wave goes through a surface and changes speed and direction, and absorption, when a wave's energy is deposited into the object. Now refraction is an example of something called transmission. Now transmission is when a wave moves through a material. Now refraction is when a wave changes speed and direction when it transmits through a material. So when a wave meets a boundary between two materials, in general, some of the wave changes direction and remains in the medium. This is reflection. So if an object produces a reflection, the angle of reflection is the same as the angle of incident. Now we call this specular reflection, and it's said that the object is obeying the law of reflection. Now, to produce specular reflection, a smooth bare surface is required, and this is found in materials like glass. So, in specular reflection, the single reflection happens in one single direction. Now, the image produced in, this, in specular reflection is a virtual image. Now, the equivalence of specular reflection for sound waves is called an echo. Now, if an object does not produce, quote, a reflection as we will call it in our English language, the angle of reflection occurs at many different angles. We say that the light has scattered. Now, this is called diffuse reflection, and it's said that the object is not obeying the law of reflection. Now, to produce diffuse reflection, a rough surface is required. This is because the different orientations of the surface produce reflections at different angles. So, in diffuse reflection, the reflected rays are scattered in all directions, which is shown in the following image on the screen. Now, diffuse reflection is much more common than specular reflection, as more objects are rough than smooth. So, diffuse reflection causes light to scatter in all directions off the surface when it reflects. So if an object produces a reflection, like we said, it obeys the laws of reflection and carries out specular reflection. You can see here, you have your incident ray, which produces your angle of incidence, your reflected ray, which leads to your angle of reflection. Now this is an example of a ray diagram. It shows how the wave changes with the medium. Now reflection can also be represented with a wavefront diagram. And again, it shows how a wave changes with the medium. Now, the wavefront diagram shows the wave as a series of peaks or wavefronts. Now, by definition, the distance between the wavefronts is equal to the wavelength of the wave, because each wavelength is a line joining points of the wave which are in phase, so they can be thought of as the peak of each ripple. Now, the wavefronts have the same separation before and after reflection as the wavelength and frequency of a wave is not changed in reflection. In addition, we know that the speed of the wave is not changed in reflection. Now, in our ray diagram, the normal is an imaginary line used to refer to angles. Now, imaginary lines are shown with a dashed line. Now, an imaginary line in a wave diagram means there's no physical line in the real world. Now, the normal is always drawn as a dashed line as it is imaginary. So, the normal is a construction line used to help us measure angles in diagrams. The normal is named as such as it's normal or perpendicular to the surface. So if we look at this diagram in a bit more detail, the incoming ray forms the angle of instant with the normal, and the arrow on the wave indicates the direction of the wave motion, whilst the reflected ray forms the angle of reflection with the normal. Now please note that the angle must always be formed with the normal. So you can see on the screen here, these are not the angles of incidence or the angles of reflection. Now again, the angles in the diagram are always formed between the ray and the normal. So again, for specular reflection, the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection, and we call this the law of reflection. The law of reflection is only obeyed if the angles of incidence and refraction reflection are found in the same plane. 
Now, like uh, plane waves, circular waves like ripples from dropping a stone into a pond can be reflected too. Now, this allows for reflection to be observed in a ripple tank. Now, when circular waves reflect the, no reflect the normal of surfaces, their wavelength and frequency remain the same, just like in plane waves. Now, when a wave meets a boundary between two materials, in general, some of its energy is reflected and the remainder is transmitted into the new medium, as we can see in our following diagram. Whilst there's a reflected wave, there's also going to be some of the wave which is going to be transmitted through. Now, the principle of conservation of energy means that at the boundary between two materials, the energy of the reflected wave added to the energy of the transmitted wave must equal the energy of the incident wave. Now, the wave speed depends on some of the properties of the medium. So as a wave crosses a boundary between two different materials, it will speed up or slow down. For example, light travels at a higher speed in air than it does in water or glass. And water waves slow down as they move from deep to shallow water. Now, refraction is the change in direction of a wave that occurs due to the change in wave speed as it travels from one medium to another. So, for example, sound waves can refract. Sound travels faster in warmer air than cold air. So at night, a temperature inversion may occur where the air at the ground is warmer than that higher up. So the sound waves will travel faster in the warmer air, so will curve back to the ground towards back at night. So this is why you often hear things at night from a distance. Now, when a wave slows down, the wave fronts get closer together, as shown in our following wave front diagram. Now, this is to be expected as wave speed is equal to frequency times by wavelength. Now, the frequency is determined by the source of the wave and must remain constant. So, it tells us that if the speed decreases, the wavelength must also decrease. Now, technically, the intensity and amplitude of the wave also decreases slightly upon refraction, since a small portion of the wave also reflects, but it's not as noticeable as the change in speed and wavelength. So this is how refraction will be observed in a ripple tank. Now, as we mentioned before, the speed of water waves is affected by changes in the depth of the water. If the wave slows down, its wavelength decreases and its frequency remains unchanged, and vice versa. Now, a wave will change direction when it enters a new medium when it hits that at, at an angle. Now, when a wave strikes the boundary at an angle, part of the wavefront reaches the new medium before the rest of the wave. That part will therefore change speed first. It will slow down before the rest of the wavefront. So, we know that as the rest of the wavefront enters the medium, and so slows down, the wavefront changes direction. It has been refracted. So, when a wave enters a denser medium, it slows down and deflects towards the normal. Now, the change in the angle of the, it depends on the ratio of the wave speeds in each medium. The bigger the change in wave speed, the bigger the change in angle. So, to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we've looked at reflection and refraction of all waves, and techniques and procedures used to demonstrate these wave effects using a ripple tank. So, if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to define the concept of reflection and refraction, explain what happens to the waves when they encounter a material, and detail how reflection and refraction can be observed with a ripple tank. So thank you for watching this lesson on reflection and refraction, which is part of the waves topic in Module 4, Electrons, Waves and Photons for OCR A-Level Physics. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.